component, everything yeah. moving around. I mean, that's just kind of just normal at this point. Uh, yeah, business as usual. Uh, I think so. That's three in a row yeah. that uh, opponents dropped out like two weeks or less from the event. Um, and I think it's nine, maybe nine times total in my career uh, with the UFC. So we're like 25%. <laughs> So yeah, so it's uh yeah, business as usual. You know, I, I, I train to to be the best fighter that I can be uh every out. So um you know, and at this point I fought everybody from the you know, the tall, lanky, six foot four lefties to, you know, guys my height and righties and grapplers and wrestlers and strikers. So um I just I'm you know I, I, I appreciate it when, when guys are willing to step up, you know, because there are a lot, of, a lot of fighters that say, you know, anytime, any place, you know, uh, anywhere. And uh, sometimes those guys don't say yes. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm appreciative that, uh, you know, Jared hopped in here on, on two weeks' notice. Is there ever a situation where you wouldn't say yes? Like, is there an opponent that could be so different to the guy that you were booked that you were like, I can't do that on a week's notice or something like that? Uh, no, not really. You know, uh, I don't, I, I mean, for me, it's really always just been the opportunity to fight um, because like what I'm, what I'm really chasing and, and always have been chasing is that, that like perfect fight. Um, and any, you know, any, any, any skill set that a, an opponent brings could be that one, um, you know, where, where I go out and I'm like, hmm, that was, that was as close to perfect as we're going to get. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, like, and I'm, I'm stubborn as hell if you haven't noticed yet. Um, so, like, when I get that date, you know, like, because I, I could have waited for Klein, um, you know, until, uh, like, mid-July. But uh, yeah, I'd already put in, you know, uh, a month of training and, and been busting my butt. And um, I didn't want to have to do it for another two months. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I want to fight, you know. So... Um, you know, and, and, and I want to end my career like I started my career, which is, is being aggressive and fighting and, and, and being active. So um, that's what I'm going to do. As much as you love to fight, I wonder how much, how much of your life outside of, like, the actual fight is spent thinking about MMA? Because I can look at you on social media and it's, yeah. it's farming, it's <laughs> brewing, it's, it's yeah. grilling, it's health. I mean, are, are you thinking about MMA as little as possible outside of fights themselves? Um. I try. Yeah, that's that's kind of the goal, uh, you know, because like, uh, you know, the, the, the personality type that that made me fall in love with this sport is that I like learning. Um, I like learning new skills. I like uh, sucking at stuff and and, uh, you know, uh, dealing with failure and, and, and overcoming it, you know. Um, so I like to do that stuff outside you know, the octagon as well. And, and, um, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm a busy body. I can't, I can't, I can't do the, you know, playing video games or, uh, you know, watching Netflix, stuff like that. That's not me. Um, I need to, I need to be, uh, tinkering with stuff and, and getting my hands dirty and, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just it, like when, when I don't get to do that stuff, like so we moved a couple of years ago and, uh, I don't have a, I don't have a workshop at my place, you know, like I've, I've got a, I, I built two sets of nursery furniture and, and did our kitchen cabinets in our old place and, and, uh, did all this stuff. And it's like, I've got a bunch of shop tools that I, I don't have a place, place to set them up and it, and it bugs me and it like eats me alive, you know? Uh, so yeah, like I, I, I obviously I find stuff to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I, I, I enjoy that type of stuff cause you gotta, um, you got to be you, you know, and um, like a guy like Donald Cerrone, you know, like that's he, he's always doing his stuff, you know, as he as he's fighting and people would give him shit for for being Donald. And it's like, man, like he, he's still going out and he's performing and he's and he's doing the things that he needs to do to take his mind off of it, to relax, to 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 actively recover and all, and all sorts of that, you know, all, all that other stuff. So um, I always I always appreciated that about him, that uh, he was the same guy whether it was two weeks out from a fight or you know he just had just fought a couple of weeks ago um and i'm kind of the same way you know i i we we have some similarities in what the stuff we like to do and then we've got some differences but uh yeah like he's always one of those guys that i, I appreciate that about him 
Uh, match up with Jared. I know, like, you know, there's a lot of guys on the roster you might not know a whole ton about, but mm -hmm. this guy, I imagine you'll have know, crossed paths a little bit, East Coast, kind of been mm -hmm. around. So just give me your thoughts on him as, as a guy, as a fighter in the matchup. Uh, yeah, I like it. You know, like, I, 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 I don't, like I said, I, re I really don't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me, like, who's stepping across. Sometimes, the, sometimes those unknown guys, uh, it's, it's more, it's more pressure. It's more, uh, more uncertainty, you know, um, I like fighting guys that I've seen fight a bunch of times and then I'm a fan of, um, you know, and I've, and I've watched Jared over the years. Uh, he fought a few of my training partners, you know, years ago before he got into the UFC and, um, yeah, he's a, he's a guy that, uh, you know, we could have, we could have crossed paths at any time, um, you know, over the years and, and we just haven't. And, uh, yeah, you know, um, I, I, I like the matchup. I think it's an exciting fight. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm pumped for it. Last thing for me, we know the, the march to 300 still continues on or maybe beyond that. We'll see. Does the mullet go with you the whole way? Or it's I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, it's starting to grow on my wife a little bit. So, uh, you know, that, that, was the, that was the big hurdle to get over. So, yeah, she's starting to appreciate it a little bit. Uh, my boys were watching Roadhouse the other day, and I was like, that's what my hair was before I got the haircut. You know, I had to trim it out of my eyes. It was getting bad, but I was like, I, I, I was there. I was there. Hey, Jim. Um, what was the biggest thing that you took from your loss to Alexander Hernandez? Um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it was a close fight. Right, I had some of the media outlets that that picked me as the winner. Um, the thing of it is, is I'm never going to change the way that I fight, especially at this point. Right? Um, what got me into MMA was watching guys like you know Fedor and Matt Hughes, uh, Chuck, um, Henzo, you know. Uh, Vanderlei, like these guys that just went out and they, they fought their asses off. They weren't point fighting. And I mean, I, I went out there and I, I feel like I had uh, more instances where I had opportunities to finish the fight than he did. And I know that the fights aren't scored like they were back in the pride days. Um, but if it was, I think I win that fight. And, you know, and I think there are a few fights that I've lost through, through my career that if the fight was scored on, you know, uh, who was trying to finish the fight more, I probably would have won. And then there's probably, you know, a fight or two that I've lost, uh, probably did, specifically the second Lausanne fight. Um, you know, if they've scored that as who was trying to finish the fight more or who came closer to finishing the fight, then he wins that one. Um, but that's the way that I fight. Like, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm never happy when it goes to the judges. Even, even the dominant, you know, decision wins that I've had, um, it's, it's, not, it's not what I step into the, into the octagon to do. I step in there to, to dominate and to, uh, and, to, and to put my opponent away because that's what excites me. So, um, you know, yeah, like uh, uh, the, the, the takeaway is sometimes fighting the way that I fight sucks. Um, you know, and it, and it, and it, and it costs me money and it, and it costs me a W on my, uh, on my record, but, uh, in the grand scheme of things, I won't, I, I won't, I won't change. I won't have it any other way, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, I think it, uh, I think it still just builds a legacy. And I mean, aside from that also, um, uh, on eye pokes and, and, and gloves and stuff like that, it's not the gloves I would really like to see, uh, uh, like they did back in the prior days. I would, I would like to see, uh, you know, percentage purse deductions and, and points immediately, um, like zero tolerance, um, because it's not, uh, it, it's not an accident. It's not the glove that causes it. Um, it's the tentativeness uh, in the person throwing the strikes uh, is what, what causes it. Who wins in a fight, a, Uf a UFC flyweight or an NFL linebacker? <laughs> uh, I, I'm probably, I'm probably going to go with the UFC flyweight, honestly. Um, you know, just uh, more ways to win. Um, I think uh, better conditioned to deal with the pace, um, you know. Uh, 
yeah, you, you wrap your arms around somebody's neck and uh, they, they, they go unconscious, you know? So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough fight. It's always a tough fight. Size and strength are tools. You know, they're, they're weapons. And, uh, you know, uh, I, am, I am 100% on the, uh, like, strength and conditioning side of this. I believe that this sport is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a clear 50-50 split, you know, and obviously, like, there are fighters that are better athletes that aren't as technically proficient, and there are fighters that are super technically proficient that aren't great athletes, and they, they make up for it. Um, but, uh, yeah, size and strength, it's, uh, and having sparred with plenty of guys that are, like, pushing three bills, uh, you know, I, it, it's, it sucks, you know, and, and, I mean, one of the things that I always used to say is I, I would have fought my brother, you know, um, and the thing is, is it's going to be a tough fight for me because I was a smaller guy, you know, and I know that if, if, like, I could, I could catch him in jiu-jitsu, I could, I could, uh, I could take him down wrestling, I could land good shots, um, but when you add it all together and then he's able to fatigue me for 15 minutes, it's going to be a much harder fight for me, you know, so, uh, but yeah, yeah, flyweight. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Jim, you mentioned earlier the um, perfect fight. Yep. How close have we gotten to that, or with who did you have there, you're the closest to that perfect fight? Um, you know, uh, it, probably the closest was uh, Fabrizio Camoz, um, honestly. You know, I, I, I submitted a third-degree black belt from my back, you know, with an arm bar, and uh, he was fresh, uh, he was uninjured. So uh, that, was, that was pretty close, but he took me down, and he hit me a couple times. So, like, that's, like, that's the, that's the, the thing that, you know, kind of stands out in my mind, where it's like, man, it it still could have been better. Um, but, uh, yeah, there, there've been a, there've been a couple, uh, that have, that have been pretty close. Um, you know, it's gotta be part like, like, I, it, it, it's, it's gotta be, you know, dominant and, and, and violent, but it also has to be a little bit like, I need to be pushed a little bit too. So like, that's, that's the hard part, right? It's like, uh, figuring out like what exactly, like on the, on the spectrum, is it, you know, me and me and Lausanne one, you know, uh, or, or is it like those dominant coming and steamroll somebody? Um, I think it's somewhere in between, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's the unicorn that I think I'll never catch. All right, well, I hope you do this weekend. Last for me, you mentioned being a fan of guys. What made you a fan of the person you signed up to fight this Saturday? Uh, just his aggressiveness. He, you know, he comes out to fight. Like he's, he's, not, uh, he's not somebody that's out there to, to, to point fight. He's not... Um, you know, sometimes like I, 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 I understand the game. I've been around for a long time. I've, I've, I, I was pressured, you know, uh, over a decade ago to like, Hey, you know, become the heel, uh, you know, sell the fights more, this and that. But like I said, that's not what made me fall in love with the sport. Um, you know, and, and, and Jared's a guy that goes out and he fights hard and, and he, and he, and he does his thing. And, and, uh, you know, like, he he had a he had a crummy decision that that didn't go his way and and uh, there are probably plenty of plenty of athletes on the planet that'd be you know uh, pissing and moaning about it and he didn't he hopped right back on there and and uh, you know hopped into another fight. Excellent, thank you, sir, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.